As we're all aware, we're in the final age of the last days. Most of the biblical prophecies of the Lord's return have come to pass. We know the Lord Jesus is supposed to come now. There are those who believe the Lord has come. They are probably right. So our investigating into Almighty God's work in the last days means a lot in terms of welcoming the return of the Lord. Since there will be many false Christs in the last days, people give much attention to the prevention of them. But they're forgetting the last days is the time, the very time for the appearance of God, the time for Lord Jesus to come back. If guarding against false Christs is all we focus on, without taking the initiative to seek God's appearance or to investigate God's work, then truly, it is pathetic for us. For us to welcome the Lord Jesus' return, we must know how to tell the true Christ from the false ones. This relates directly to our rapture before the throne of God. But still, we don't quite understand the truth of this discernment. But we must learn how to discern. So we want Sister Cho to fellowship with us about how to recognize the true Christ. This is the truth we need most right now. As we know, now deception from false Christs occurs in every country. Even here, many are fooled into believing false Christs. This has just fulfilled the Lord Jesus' prophecy. Then if any man shall say to you, See, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, so that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I think all news preaching the Lord is returned is false personally. We can't believe it. Otherwise, we'll be fooled. Now, am I right or wrong in this opinion? Help me, please, with your fellowship. Well, from the time Almighty God starts expressing the truth and begins doing the work of judgment in the last days, then mankind has entered into the age of kingdom. That age has begun, but if people still remain in the age of grace, then they are falling behind. Then they are left behind by God's work. When the Lord Jesus has come again in secret to start the work of judgment beginning with the house of God, many false Christs and deceivers will appear at the same time to imitate and disturb God's work. And so, when the false Christs begin appearing, it means that God has already returned and he has arrived in secret, but the people just don't know about it yet. This is an opportunity for us to seek and to investigate God's work in the last days. However, regarding the return of the Lord, many people take guarding against false Christs as their priority. They pay no attention to how to hear God's voice like wise virgins, or how to welcome the return of the Lord Instead, they cling to their notions and imaginations, thinking anyone who witnesses the Lord Jesus' return is false. Aren't they the foolish virgins mentioned by the Lord Jesus? Haven't they also condemned the returned Lord Jesus? The question I would like to ask is, do these kinds of people really genuinely believe in the return of the Lord Jesus? Aren't they, in behaving like this, just denying his return? That's right. Pastor Lee, we shouldn't deny the testimonies of the Lord's coming just because of the appearance of the false Christs of the last days. If so, don't we give up eating for fear of choking? Discernment between the true Christ and false ones is the best means of revealing whether a person has truth or not. And it also reveals if a person is a wise virgin or a foolish one. 
Some people just take this verse as evidence enough to judge and condemn the incarnate Christ and deny Christ's arrival. They appear foolish by that. But for us to distinguish the true Christ from all the false ones, we all should know the substance of Christ as a beginning. As we all know, the Lord Jesus is the incarnate Christ. Christ is the incarnate God. That is, the God in heaven takes on a flesh and becomes the Son of Man to work in the world. Christ is the embodiment of the Spirit of God. He has the divine substance, the almightiness, wisdom, disposition of the Spirit of God, and all that God has and is have been realized in Christ. Christ is the truth, and He is the way and the life. Hence, we can say for sure that Christ is not a vague God, not fictional or illusory. He is real and practical, worthy for man to rely on and trust. He is the practical God that can be followed and be known by man. Just like the Lord Jesus, who lived in the human world completely real and vivid, accomplishing His work of leading men and of shepherding them. After we know the substance of Christ, it's easier for us to distinguish the true Christ from the false ones. Let's read a passage of Almighty God's Word. Please turn to page 3. Pastor Kim, will you please read for us? Yes. To study such a thing is not difficult, but requires each of us to know this truth. He, who is God's incarnation, shall hold the substance of God, and he, who is God's incarnation, shall hold the expression of God. Since God becomes flesh, he shall bring forth the work he must do. And since God becomes flesh, he shall express what he is, and shall be able to bring the truth to man, bestow life upon man, and show man the way. Flesh that does not contain the substance of God is surely not the incarnate God. Of this there is no doubt. To investigate whether it is God's incarnate flesh, man must determine this from the disposition he expresses and the words he speaks, which is to say, whether or not it is God's incarnate flesh and whether or not it is the true way must be judged from his substance. And so, in determining whether it is the flesh of God incarnate, the key is to pay attention to his substance, his works, his words, his disposition, and many more, rather than external appearance. If man sees only his external appearance and overlooks his substance, then that shows man's ignorance and naivete. Let's stop it here. In the Age of Grace, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He expressed a great deal of truth, mainly manifested his disposition of love and compassion, and accomplished God's work of redeeming all mankind. Lord Jesus' work and his word and his disposition, they prove completely that Christ is the truth and the life and also the way. In the last days, Almighty God comes and says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. He expresses millions of words and opens the scroll, displays His main disposition that is righteous, and does the judgment work in the last days. Almighty God's work of judgment and chastisement to save corrupt mankind has once again proved 
Christ is the truth and the life and also the way. The Lord Jesus prophesied a long time ago He would come in the last days to do the work of judgment and in the way of becoming flesh as the Son of Man, as the appearance of the Son of Man, He would come into the world and speak to the churches. Almighty God's work, we know, has fulfilled quite exactly the Lord Jesus' prophesied return. We can see that if He is the true incarnate Christ, He is able to express the truth and God's disposition, able to do God's work of judgment in the last days, able to conquer, save, and purify man, and able to carry out God's will and also to be His testimony. Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. All the truth He expresses definitely will conquer the entire, quite corrupt humanity as a whole. It will bring all those who truly believe in God before God's throne. Surely, Christ will accomplish completely all God's work of the last days. This is definitely a fact. Yes, exactly. False Christs are just evil spirits claiming to be Christ. They are no more than deceivers. Most of them are possessed by evil spirits. Even if they are not actually possessed, they are very arrogant and unreasonable devils. So they dare claim to be Christ. Fake Christs commit the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, and they inevitably are sure to be cursed. This is because they have the substance of evil spirits. In fact, all of these many false Christs are without truth and are nothing more than deceiving devils, which means all they have to offer are fallacies and lies and can't convince others thoroughly. What they say and what they act can't be shown to the public or put on the internet for all people to investigate because false Christs are dark and evil spirits, evil and in fear of the light. All they can do is perform some simple signs and wonders to deceive those foolish and ignorant people in dark corners. Therefore, we'll say with certainty people who proclaim themselves to be Christ but deceive others by displaying some signs and wonders are nothing but false Christs. Every one of the truths that have ever been expressed by Almighty God, Christ of the last days, have been published on the internet, open to the whole of mankind. All true believers who love the truth seek the true way, and they have returned one by one before the throne of Almighty God in order to accept the judgment, purification, and perfection of God's word, which is widely known, of course. The deeds and words of the false Christs are totally different from those of the Christ in the flesh. This is easy to discern for whoever understands the truth. Your fellowship is incredibly clear. Only he who can express truth and do the judgment work of the last days is the incarnate God, the appearance of Christ of the last days. False Christ, without truth, are unable to do the work of God. Those who falsely claim and rely on making a show of some signs, wonders, lies, and fallacies in order to deceive us are false Christs. This is the correct method to determine the true Christ from the false. Right. I believe this is the absolute key that will unlock discernment. Therefore, it's the most exact way we can discern the true Christ from false, according to the principle that Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Jesus has said that God's sheep hear God's voice. The wise virgins are able to recognize the voice of God. The voice of God is a voice that is known to them. The wise virgins can discover truths from the voice of the bridegroom find God's disposition, and they can also find what God has and is in His words, and then can understand the will of God. 
so they will be accepting of God's work and will return before the throne of God. Why aren't foolish virgins able to recognize the voice of the bridegroom? The reason is that foolish virgins are completely unable to discern the truth, are unable to discern the voice of God. All they can keep are regulations. Thus they will all be exposed and be eliminated by the work of God in the last days. The mystery of the wise virgins is, whoever can recognize the genuine voice of God from the truth expressed by Christ of the last days is a wise virgin and will be accepting of God's work and will follow the footsteps of the Lamb. But the foolish virgins blindly follow doctrines, only focus on guarding against false Christs, but not on distinguishing God's voice. Thus, they are revealed and eliminated by God's work of the last days. It is true that God's sheep hear His voice. There is another method to discern the true Christ from all the false ones, and that's according to the principle that God never repeats His work. God is always new and never old. Let us read from the words of Almighty God. Please turn to page 956. If in the last days a God, the same as Jesus, appeared, one who healed the sick, cast out demons, and was crucified for man. That God, though identical to the description of God in the Bible, and easy for man to accept, would not, in its essence, be the Spirit of God clothed in flesh, but an evil spirit clothed in flesh. For it is the principle of God's work never to repeat what He has already completed. If, during the last days, God still displayed signs and wonders, and still cast out demons and healed, if He did exactly the same as Jesus, then God would be repeating the same work, and the work of Jesus would have no significance or value. Thus, God carries out one stage of work in every age. Once each stage of His work has been completed, it is soon imitated by evil spirits, and after Satan begins to follow on the heels of God, God changes to a different method. Once God has completed a stage of His work, it is imitated by evil spirits. You must be clear about these things. Almighty God's Word makes it clear that He does not repeat His work. For example, when the Lord Jesus came to do His work, He didn't repeat the work of the Age of Law, but carried out His work of redeeming humanity upon the foundation of the work in the Age of Law, ending the Age of Law and opening the Age of Grace. In the last days, Almighty God comes here to end the age of grace and to begin the age of kingdom. He does the work of judging and purifying man, which is based upon the work of redemption the Lord Jesus did. And he gives people all truth they need in order to achieve salvation, resolves men's corrupt disposition, and resolves men's sinful nature as well, saves men thoroughly from the influence of Satan, and makes men attain sanctity and be fully gained by God. Thus, God's management work of saving man will come to an end completely, which lets us see God's work is always moving and progressing forward, always going higher and deeper at every step. In God's work, there is never any repetition. However, False Christs can only deceive people by imitating some simple signs and wonders the Lord Jesus did. Such large miracles of Jesus like raising the dead or the miracle of feeding 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, these could never be accomplished by false Christs and evil spirits. Also, it is the case that false Christs are even less capable of expressing the truth because they are evil spirits and devils in substance. 
false Christs are without truth, so they lie with their words, so they'll be able to fool and cheat men. Care his will, his thoughts, and his worries. It's my wish to delight and satisfy him. I have done much work among men, and the words I have expressed during this time have been many. What then is the truth? The truth is what God has and is, and the reality of all things positive, which represents God's disposition. And it is the truth that enables mankind to know God, the truth that can be the life of man, can save, cleanse, change, and perfect man.